love loud concerts, the occasional team project, and hanging out with my friends in my free time. But I am an introvert. For the majority of my life so far, while I love all the things I mentioned in the beginning, I also love being alone. I like sitting by myself with a good novel and a cup of tea, and sometimes when I'm at a party for a few hours, I get tired and need to be by myself. In today's society, we often associate introverts as being shy, quiet, or even antisocial. While in most cases, this is certainly not true. And in some, it can be the complete opposite. So what is the main difference between introverts and extroverts? The main difference between introverts and extroverts is how we re-energize or recharge. Extroverts re-energize when they're with large groups of people, while introverts re-energize when they're alone. Why is this important? Why do we need to distinguish the characteristics between introverts and extroverts anyway? The fact is that because the majority of the world are extroverts, introverts are regarded as different and are misunderstood. Like I said before, introverts can be viewed as antisocial or have anxiety in social settings, but this is a misconception. In reality, introverts can actually be really social. They are just overly stimulated. That's another major difference between introverts and extroverts. According to psychologist Hans Ensniak, introverts need less outside stimulation to, be, to feel energized than extroverts do. This may mean certain introverts may not like loud noises or parties, and may prefer to be a, with a few close friends instead. Some people believe that introversion is a choice, and it can be fixed. While you can always fake extroversion, introverts can't be fixed, mainly because there is nothing to be fixed. There is nothing wrong with introverts. We just perceive different situations in different ways. In fact, there have been studies that prove that our brains work differently as well. In 2012, neuroscientist and psychologist Randy Buckner proved that introverts have more gray matter in their prefrontal cortex than extroverts do. The prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain that's associated with abstract thought and decision making. This may mean that introverts have different social tendencies than extroverts do. According to Psychology Today, one third of the world's population are introverts. So if you're not one, you're probably sitting near one right now. You may even be friends with one and not realize it. Some famous introverts include J.K. Rowling, Steven Spielberg, Dr. Seuss, Abraham Lincoln, and my personal favorites, Eleanor Roosevelt and Emma Watson. Another characteristic of introverts is that, in a psychological sense, they can be highly sensitive. This can mean that they can be overly joyed when witnessing a particular piece of artwork or music, particularly happy when seeing an act of kindness, or extremely saddened when seeing an act of violence. Introverts also don't tend to speak unless they feel the absolute need to. This may mean that they may not like small talk, but can be extremely talented at public speaking and can speak for hours about something that they find truly interesting. Last week, I was taking a personality test, one of the thousands probably available on the internet, and discovered that there is not only one type of introvert, there are four. Social, anxious, thinking, and restrained. Social introverts are the people who have a preference for small or no groups rather than large ones but they don't necessarily have anxiety in social settings. Anxious introverts, on the other hand, can be awkward or self-conscious when they're around other people. Thinking introverts are thoughtful and introspective and often daydream or think of what-if situations. Restrained introverts think before they speak or act and may move at a slower pace than most extroverts. They're the people who don't get up immediately when they wake up in the morning and may perform tasks at a slower pace. One important fact to realize, though, is that while most people can be characterized as either an introvert or an extrovert, everyone has traits of both. We are all on the spectrum of introversion and extroversion. So while one may love parties and hanging out with their friends, they may not prefer small talk. Or while, like me, one might love watching Netflix by themselves, but would love to go to a music festival with their best friend. So, after learning about introversion, what can we do? 
perhaps just having a greater understanding about the people around us is a step in the right direction. But we also need to understand that not all introverts are the stereotypical shy person reading books in the corner. And to all the extroverts out there, sure, ask your introverted friend to the dance next weekend. But if they, if they say that they prefer to stay inside, don't pressure them, but also don't take it personally. Maybe ask again ne next week and they might agree. Because everyone wants friends and no one wants to be alone. But we have to understand that not everyone loves parties or talking all the time. Overall, we need to respect everyone's needs and qualities because that's what makes us different. And no matter if you are an introvert or an extrovert, everyone deserves to be understood and appreciated.